Well, the ascension of basketball star Caitlin Clark has made the WNBA some must see TV and fans are tuning in and buying tickets at rates not seen in decades. Despite that success, though, financial struggles remain for the league and uh, Jeff is here now to break that down for us. Jeff Aaron, the bad news for the league is the latest headline, but let's start first by celebrating the WNBA's recent accomplishments. Last month, approximately 400,000 fans attended games. That's the most through the first month of a season in 26 years and more than half of all the games that month were sellouts, an increase of 156 percent from the previous season. Now, how about the fans watching at home? Games airing on networks like ESPN and CBS are averaging 1.3 million viewers per game. That's almost three times higher than last year's game average. Even merchandise sales are skyrocketing. Since the start of the season, the website WNBAstore.com has seen a 756% increase in sales compared to the same time period last year. Yet, even with all that I've just laid out for you, the Washington Post reported that the league is expected to lose $50 million this year. Since the WNBA was founded in 1996, it has averaged losing about $10 million per year. The league literally exists in the red. So how can it capitalize on its young star players like Caitlin Clark, who are bringing in more fans and money? Two key points, broadcasting rights and expansion. WCCO Sports Director Mike Max is here now. Now the WAPO report, Mike, states that the WNBA could triple its annual TV rights revenue. How impactful could that be for the league? That, that's, that gives you some perspective. The, the Golden State Warriors, one game, will generate about $11 million a gate. The Minnesota Lynx won't come near that for the entire season. season. That's how big the disparity is that people don't realize. A lot of people, this is the first time they've taken a look at this. They only play 32 games in the WNBA, so you only got so much inventory. Mm -hmm. There's lots of reasons. Average ticket price, the, the, the television rights, but what happens is Glenn Taylor and a lot of these guys, that, there's originally only 12 teams, a lot of owners wouldn't buy into the WNBA because it's a loser in terms of financially. Now, if you start to show some stabilization in the Caitlin Clark factor, we don't know if that's a one-off or how long it will go, now you got a chance to build some momentum, but you got to be a standalone eventually for most. But because you got billionaire owners, they can use this and say, this is a good community relations thing. This is a good marketing thing to date. Now they might have a chance to finally cash in, but they have not in the, in the 25 years yeah. the links have been this, existed. This would be the turning point with what we're seeing now. And we should also mention there's 12 teams, as you said, but two more coming in the next two years. Does expansion automatically mean more money for the league? They can if they get the expansion fee that they want. And what they'll do is they'll roll in this TV deal. They'll make it big enough so that the, the, the TV network that takes them on will also get the WNBA, and then they'll decide as to how they want to disperse that. But the NBA, we'll never forget this, the NBA is off the charts profitable right. right now internationally, and so they can fund anything they want. Well, hopefully the WNBA is part of that in the years ahead. Thank you, Mike.